Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. Eller here. So I got a lot of questions when I did my Apray Gel X nails on Instagram in a little clip. Everybody wanted to know what I used, what I did, how I did, what I did, what I did. So I decided to make a full video on it this week, showing you guys how I apply mine. I've only done this three times. You would think, wow, you're doing a whole video. What do you know? I do know that they last and they look good. So <laughs> I'm going to show you what I do. I definitely recommend these nails because if you're like me, when you go to the nail shop, they don't be shaping it right. They don't be following it right. They don't be doing it right. So do it yourself. All right. Everything that I use in this video, I will link in the description box. I haven't had a lot of experience with different brands, but these brands that I have used and that I'm showing in this video, I didn't have any issues with it. So obviously first and first, you want to get everything out and nice and organized the one that okay I already took my gel polish off last night I already know the nail sizes that I need but if you don't you just want to measure out um, the individual nail to what fits to your individual nails they have different sizes different shapes different lengths all that according to how you want your nail shape to look I also file down the inside of the top part of the nail, pretty much this whole section right here. I filed that down with a drill. Not everybody does this, but my previous nail tech did it and I see a lot of people do it as well as far as helping um, the longevity of it adhering to your nail, so. Just like that. Obviously you don't want to file it too much because you don't want to thin out the nail. You just want to create a slightly rougher surface. All right, so I obviously know what design I'm doing. I have all the colors and everything that I need out. Now I just got to get the stubs ready, okay? Now if you want to do this all professional-like, let them soak, use a cuticle softener to soften up your cuticles. I don't do that every time, I'm just going to be honest. Um, but you should, because it definitely helps. I like to start first by clipping my natural nails all the way down. As you can see, they've grown out. I usually always cut them right back down to the studs. I don't like my real nails to show underneath my gel X, so I cut them all the way down. And then I'm just going to file them out so they aren't so sharp. All right, so now I'm gonna push back my cuticles, which would be easier, if, like I said, if you use a cuticle softener or let your hands soak in some water like they do at the nail shop. Sometimes I just don't have the patience for that. <laughs> so I just go right on in. Now this next step, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but like right on the edge of the cuticle in my nail, it's like kind of like just dead crappy nail. I don't even know what they call this. I don't have a nail cosmetology license or any of that stuff, but I want to get rid of this dead area. And so that's why I use a drill for this part. I get my really narrow one. This drill came with all of these pieces. Like I said, I'll leave it in the bio and you just insert it right in. And I'm going to use this to clean up around and under my cuticle. This drill has like a dial that speeds it up and slows it down. So I put it all the way to the very lowest setting because you know, these things do thin your nails out. So you have to be careful of how much you drill your nails so that you don't thin out your nails too much. The whole point of this is just to clean up all this white caca on the cuticle. Having to use my left hand definitely makes the whole process a little slower because I have to obviously take my time on this side so I don't hurt myself. The reason I started even doing my nails in the first place because everybody that knows me knows like I have terrible experiences at the nail shop. Just always been very picky on my nails and I would find somebody that could do them well enough for me to be like, okay, you know they be charging an arm and a leg these days. So I will find people and they would do a good job like the first time and then I don't know what will be happening. It would be like, they were charging more but doing worse. It was like, what's going on here? So if I'm gonna pay you 160, 190, however much dollars to get my nails done and they're not perfect, like they gotta be perfect for me to pay that type of money and I was not getting perfect. All right, so. I just filed them little crusties down. Now I'm gonna get my cuticle clipper. I pushed my nail bed back just a little bit more and you don't wanna over clip and it's very easy to do that. But I just get right where the nail is and the tip of the cuticle. So this side is gliding on the nail 
and the other side is facing up to click what's hanging off if that makes any sense. Any hangnails you have, go ahead and click those off. If it hurts, you're not doing it right. It should not hurt at all to clip off the dead cuticle. And if you don't have anything to clip, don't clip it. All right, once again, another optional part, but I like to go over the cuticle one last time. Some of you guys are probably side eyeing me, but like I said, these are my hands. But sometimes after clipping, my cuticles are a little jagged. So I get this drill bit. It has more of like a dome shape. And I go back over the top part of my nail and the cuticle just to kind of smooth it out. It almost kind of like just buffs out the cuticle. Just to get it as clean as I can get it. Now I'm going to buff out my nails. They are rough from when I scraped off my gel polish, so I don't usually like to go over my whole nail with a drill, and this pretty much does the job. All right, my nails are ready. So I'm gonna go wash them, get all this dust off, and then we are going to prep them for the tips. All right, I'm gonna pretend like I wasn't just gone for two hours. All right, these next couple of steps are very, very important. If you skip any of these steps, I can't guarantee your nails will stay on, because when I did, they did not. So, first things first, even though I just washed my hands, you still need a nail de dehydrator. It does exactly what it says, it dehydrates your nails, it takes off any of excess oils or anything you may still have in your nails and just gives you like a clean surface to apply everything else, right? Then you have the nail primer. Everybody's familiar with primers. We use primers for makeup, we use primers when we paint. It helps bond whatever comes after it. So if you were to apply gel polish or the gel base after it, it helps um, bond to the nail better. And lastly, I cure my nails with the base, the foundation base. This is also used under gel polish, um, but I like to use them under the, um, the nails as well. Some people do, some people don't. And so I'm gonna cure my nails first with this before I go in with the actual nail and the nail glue. I still haven't perfected the right amount to use, but I do put some on the main part and then I put the excess on the edge right here, which I'll show you. And how you place the nail on your nail is very important as well. You wanna start at the cuticle and you wanna slowly press the nail down in that motion. So it has to be this motion. And as soon as you have it pressed all the way down, do not let it back up. You have to go immediately under the LED light. If it starts popping back up and you keep putting it back on wrong, that ain't gonna be good for you, sis. So that's why this little light is convenient. It's like you can do one finger at a time. Instead of using this whole big thing where you'd have to have the nail on and then somehow get your hand under there without you know, letting the nail come off, which I've done before, and it gets a little annoying. So these are really cheap. Once you have the nail on, make sure the light is already on, go right under, and it's easier to cure your nail this way. So, ain't none to it but to do it, let's go. All right, first the nail dehydrator. And the primer. I also try to avoid anything touching my nails during these two parts just to keep the surface clean. And then finally, a thin, thin layer of the base gel. And I'm gonna cure this hand before I go on to the next one. All right, now it's time to add my nails. So I got my lamp right here. You basically touch the middle for it to come on. Then we have our nail already pre ready for us. We're gonna get the nail glue and I put some on obviously the part that's gonna go on my nail. You don't want too much. So I do a little bit just like that. And then I scrape some on this part since that's gonna touch first. Make sure my light is on already because it does time out. And then I start at the very base and I push down slowly. You'll see the glue spread out. And then immediately 
put it under the light. You wanna press kind of firmly down on it so there's no air bubbles. One thing I will say about the Beatles brand, um, especially the top coat and the base gel. It takes a pretty long time for them to cure. I have used other top gels and base gels and they are really fast drying, but the Beatles takes a little bit longer. But the brand has really good reviews, so I don't mind. And because it takes a long time to cure, you have to be careful if you use this brand as your foundation base because even though I let mine cure for like two, two and a half minutes, it's still sticky, but I feel like it takes forever for it to cure, so I don't mind it being a little sticky, but you have to be careful because, for instance, I accidentally touched my towel and there's like a hair underneath my nail now that I didn't see. So unless you use a fast drying foundation base that cures faster than beetles, be careful. All right, the first nail is attached and you just wanna repeat the same process for all the rest of them. All right, my whole left hand is attached. I only had a little spillage on the pinky. All the rest of them I did pretty well. And because I was recording on my phone, this one's a little crooked. If you could see, it's going a little in, but you're not really gonna tell once I put the polish and stuff on, but that's the downside of doing it yourself. Oh, and one last thing before I go into the next nail, I do like to cure again under the big light just so they all get a little extra curation. Even though they should be pretty set by now, it's just kind of like a mental thing. I gotta re-cure to make sure it's cured, cured, you know? I'm about to do this hand off camera, so it should look perfect. Y'all, I just realized why I struggled so bad doing this hand that I just said it was gonna be easy. Wasn't thinking at all, but do your right hand first. When you don't have any nails on your left hand, put them on your right hand hand first. And I forgot that part and I struggled with this hand because my claws were in the way. When you don't have any nails on, do your right hand first. But it was a struggle, not even gonna lie. So once I have both sets on and cured, I get my drill again and I have to do this part because there are some spots where I had a little glue spillage, like I said, more so on this hand than this one. On this one, I only got the pinky. But um, it basically just helps you blend the nail into the cuticle more and get rid of any glue that may have went through. So the spots where the glue went through, I don't know if you can tell, but I have a little bubble right here where the glue spilled out. I just get the drill and I kind of concentrate on that part, just filing it all the way down. Want to make sure you're focusing on just the nail glue and not the actual nail. Once the glue is gone, you just wanna make sure that surface is flat again and blends with everything else and it's smooth. The nails that are just fine and um, don't have any spillage, I still go over the cuticle area just to make things nice and clean. This is also the reason why I don't polish my nails beforehand. Some people said it would be easier, which I know it would. It would be kind of just like doing press-ons if you polished your nails before you put them on. However, if I would have polish on my nails already and had glue spillage, I would be mad because I would have to blend it off and it would mess up the paint. So I don't mind polishing them while they're on my nails. It just takes much longer, obviously. Now I'm just gonna file my nails into the shape that I want, which I want my nails long, so I'm really just squaring out the tips because I want them to be as long as possible just because the design I'm getting, I think will look better with them being super long. I like them to also be super square, pretty much like that. You can also, depending on how crooked it is, but I'm gonna file this side of my nail a little more to kind of offset it being crooked. Seeing how it's looking a lot more straight. And last but not least, you just wanna buff the nail out. This once again gets the nail smooth from when I filed it down. All right, they're all buffed out. Now I'm just gonna go wash my hands and time for the long part, which is painting them. 
So this is the design I'm attempting to do. It's not too complex, but there are a few layers that I have to do, which takes more time because you have to cure each layer, but. And I like to use the gel polish for my actual color because it dries way faster compared to the Beatles. You don't necessarily need a foundation since you already have your nails on. The foundation is really supposed to protect your nails, but I still like a base gel because I just, I don't know, I don't know. But you have to be careful when you add too many layers because you don't want the gel polish to be thick. So with the base gel and the background gel, I usually make those, everything super thin, but those especially really thin. So here are my nails right now. I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do it on this hand and then I'm gonna speed through this hand since it's gonna take much longer. Also for the background color, these are, I don't really know how to pronounce this brand. It's like a tinted lipstick basically where it's gonna give you a tint of the color as opposed to being fully opaque. So I like these. I'm gonna use this as the background. You're not really gonna be able to see it all too well, but it's just kind of like a peachy nude color. And I'm only gonna do one layer of this. But like I said, I'm gonna start with the foundation. If I did wanna do two coats of the jelly color, then I probably wouldn't have put on a foundation. All right, now I'm gonna apply the color that's gonna show through the peachy color. Try to get it as even as possible. That's what it looks like in comparison to my other nail. If you see me going over my nail like aggressively more than once, it's probably because there's like a tiny hair you can't see. I always forget to like put something other than a towel underneath, unless it's like super, super flat and not fuzzy. Cause if you put your nails all the way down on it, it's gonna stick to the towel and you'll have little fibers on it, so. All right, now I'm gonna get a brush that looks like this. I like the longer bristled one opposed to like the smaller one like this, even though both will work because I just feel like this gives me a thinner line. This is a little nail lacquer tray from Paranova. It's what I use when I'm using, doing different designs. You can really use anything you don't mind getting polish on. I'm gonna put the baby pink on here, because that is going to be the first layer, the French tip. So I get the edge of the brush nice and pointy. I feel like this brush too gives you more control to make your line super straight. Once I get the French tip rounded off at the top, I can just grab the brush and fill in the bottom. If I had to do this over again, I probably wouldn't add the second layer because as you will see in a moment, I started messing with the line again and I went higher and higher, kind of like when you're doing your eyeliner. I liked it as it was and I should've just went with my first line, but I just added more work by going back over my French tip line. All right, the next two layers I can do at the same time because they're not touching or on top of each other. I'm gonna use this brush for the squares. Start with the hot pink first and that's gonna come off of the edge of this side. And then the orange. I'm gonna go a little higher up for the square on the other side. Should look like that. And I'm gonna do the other nails before I cure this layer. And you're basically just putting the squares in different areas of the nail. Now here comes the difficult part of lining everything in black. This can get ugly real fast. I'm using the long bristled brush again just to get the line as thin as possible. And I'm gonna try not to layer anything because it's black. We all know how black can do us. Praying that I get all of these on the first swipe. So here we go. The good thing about this design is the stitches can help me. I can put the little stitch lines wherever I don't feel like the line is straight enough. And now I have to outline the squares. Add some ticky marks on there. And this is how the first nail turned out. Oh my God. I don't know if it's the coffee that got me shaking so bad, but I never usually shake this bad. But for me to be shaking, I think this turned out okay. So now I just gotta shake my way down through the rest of these.
Here's what they look like up close. I'm about to add the top coat and then I'll be done with this hand. And here is what this hand turned out like completely done. I am pretty much happy with the results. They look like I wanted them to look like the picture. <laughs> so hopefully this hand does well. Yes, I like them. I like them a lot. y'all i'm gonna put on this cuticle oil final shots and thoughts i can't do it right now because i am literally late getting to my besties birthday dinner so uh yeah i'm about to go get dressed and then i will conclude this video and let you know some of the steps that i still messed up on that you guys can do differently to make it much easier than i did because this took me about too many hours how about that too many all right y'all here are my final thoughts and things that i still messed up on this time that um I remember now and that will help you like I said before always start with your right hand first before you put your nails on because that process is so important to get right it's better to start with your non-dominant hand without nails because that's why things got hectic for me I had nails on my non-dominant hand trying to put nails on things got a little chaotic for me because I didn't remember that step and it's very important because if you don't put your nail on right and you have to lift it back up it's gonna be the problem now like anytime I don't Lay it down just like I showed you how to lay it down on the first try without it lifting up or having to redo it um, That nail at some point comes off sooner than all the rest of them It just it just never fails which brings us to my next point It's better to have a tad too much glue than not enough glue because if you do the motion I told you you don't have enough glue for it to slide all the way down your nail and you need to add more glue You're gonna have to lift the nail back up add more glue It's gonna be annoying so I'd rather have a little bit too much gel and have it spill over and clean it up then not have enough and have to lift it back up and then the nail end up falling off sooner than later. Avoid linted towels, avoid getting up and doing other things when you have the, when you're dealing with the gels and the primers and all that stuff because the lint is very, very, very annoying. Sat down, dedicate multiple hours to just sitting in that chair and getting it done on the first try as opposed to getting up and doing other stuff. Uh, other than that, make sure you have nail glue on deck at all times, that's with any type of nails. Anytime I had acrylic, Press ons, whatever you got, keep some nail glue on hand because once them suckers pop off, you don't want to be looking when nail did, okay? Uh, other than that, I hope you guys found this video informative. Learn something, try it out. If you do, let me know. If there anything is if there is anything that I did not answer in this video, make sure you ask me in the comments. Also, make sure you follow me on Instagram because I've been having people vote on my nail design. The last vote I did, these were the nails that they chose as opposed to the other design. So I'm gonna just keep doing that because. I like to change up my design a lot, which is another reason why I like that I do my nails on my own now, because it saves me several hundred dollars a month, you know? Cost a few hours, but it saves me money. I'm gonna take the save the money, okay? And if you don't like designs and you just like a simple color, like, why can't, it, it's even more easier. How about that? Thank you guys for watching, and um, yeah, until next time. Love you. Mwah.